Well, how's everybody doing? It's Wednesday morning. We got the sun shining here today, and we've got rain coming for um, Thursday and Friday. We've been working on hay equipment. We've got the potting or mower on the 7930. Uh, we, my brother, hooked that up uh, here on Monday. We worked on that yesterday. Actually, uh, Jason and my brother and. Uh, and we can't come in from Kaz equipment to help with it too. Uh, we had an issue with the control box which is mounted right on the uh, window there that controls the mower. We had some other issues that we needed help with him on. But uh, Jason has done some welding here to the corners of the cutter head right Right on the outer corners, it's uh, fairly common for these potting or mowers to uh, develop stress cracks and the cutter head leaks all the oil out. The only attaching point to the actual cutter head is this um, bracket right here on the left side. And then there's the same thing on the right. And then it's all um, just its own unit here. So there's no center support or anything. And then he had to do the uh, same thing to this um, other side. On the uh, right side of the um, left wing, and get that flashlight in there, right down in, right there. So that's all patched up. It ought to hold oil for uh, first cutting here anyways. And then I've got to get uh, fuel tank back on. Um, truck 18 here. Uh, this fuel tank had had um, a couple of uh, good sized holes in it from where it rubbed on the uh, fuel tank mounts there. So I took this tank out to uh, Tri Tank in um, Syracuse. Actually they're in, oh where the heck are they? Well, on the other side of Warner's I guess you would call it. And uh, they TIG welded it. I don't have a TIG welder. Um, it was leaking. Uh, I don't know if it was leaking right here on the other side. They acid washed it, and um, yeah, it was right, right in here somewhere. They acid washed it and put a strip on there, and uh, I'm gonna get that on here, and then that's gonna about do it for this truck. We had this um, mud flat bracket that got ripped off. We had to straighten that, put that on. And then uh, Joe and James put a set of recap tires on this. And we had a, um, oh, we had a drive shaft problem on this. They had a, a yoke to um, put on the back side of that hanger bearing there. So uh, that's all fixed. Jason and um, John have got that back in. That They had to put a new hanger bearing on it and a new end yoke. So that's all together. This truck is going to be done. Actually, I've got a um, hood mount bracket that I've got to put on here that got broke off when this mud flap went. Um, what usually happens here is they back in and this mud flap gets pressed up against something and it just pulls this whole bracket down. This is a T800 short hood, so it's got kind of a goofy um, mud flap bracket here, so it's kind of common for them to do that. I've got this mud flap up a little higher, so I'm hoping that's going to take care of it. So I've got to check on some field conditions. We're supposed to get some rain here tomorrow, and the boys are out spreading manure now, so I've got to see where they can go to uh, next because they're done with both spreaders in the areas they're uh, spreading in now so we're going to go and check on some field conditions okay we're just checking on field conditions here we're actually going to move to this field and start injecting manure on it in a little while here we got a couple of tenths of an inch of rain here last night and um, this is manageable in here we're gonna be able to get around okay uh, we ended up scratching a couple spots here with a chisel plow back a month or so ago just to catch some areas so that if if manure got running it wouldn't uh, it would slow down in them areas before it got to that pond over there 
So we're going to be able to uh, inject manure on uh, this farm here and uh, we'll get after it here. Get back to the pouch. Got to get back to the shop and get working on a few things. So this will keep the guys busy for a little while. Nice All right, we took a little bit of a break here this morning from the shop work that we had going on and whatnot. I scouted a couple of fields earlier this morning and I've got my daughter with me now, uh, my youngest daughter Charlotte. She made arrangements with me last night to take her into school today. Uh, she had a late arrival planned. She didn't have to be in the school till what, 10 o'clock or so, 10, 11 o'clock or um, class was involved in a field trip or something. What what did you have going on? Um, they went to Wonderworks. Technology went to Wonderworks. Oh, you didn't want to go? No, I didn't. You didn't want to go. She didn't want to go, so um, she's got a study hall basically the, for the rest of the day here at school. We took a little detour, ended up going to Dunkin' Donuts. That was a request of hers. And on our way to Dunkin' Donuts, we scouted a couple of fields. Uh, what kind of conditions were those fields in there, Charlotte? Very, very muddy. <laughs> we did a little bit of four-wheeling with the heavy Chevy here, so we're in the regular cab O2 Chevy pickup, and um, we keep a good set of tires on this just so that we can do that kind of thing, check fields out and whatever. And uh, The one uh, set of fields that we checked on were a little muddy. Um, we got one, one crew spread manure um, on one farm. They're able to go, but the other... The other crew they had to uh, they had to shut down they're doing an oil change on uh, 9320 and I don't know where I can send them um, this afternoon so that that 9320 and tanker might be shut down for a couple days um, it is wet so we're gonna get Charlotte to school here and then get back to the shop and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into for today Okay, folks, it's uh, Wednesday afternoon. It's about 4 o'clock. Uh, I've been in the shop all day working on trucks, and we got the mowers that we cut hay with. We got them all ready to go now. And uh, last week, um, Jared and Kerr uh, hooked this 8310R onto the coon plow. They brought that up to the shop. Uh, serviced it, replaced some tips uh, that go on the uh, share and did some other work to it. Just ran through it, made sure all the bolts and everything were tight, and greased it. And then they ran down and hooked on to um, this Wilrich uh, seven bottom plow. We haven't used this plow in a few years now. This is a seven bottom on land uh, plow. This is a five bottom with two bottoms added on to it. Um, I'm just taking this down behind our barn to unhook it. Um, I'm going to make a couple of passes with it. Let's see how this goes as Jared is, has done a little bit down here. Uh, last week he was screwing around with this plow. He just wanted to score it up a little bit. But we'll see how things go here. Make a couple passes with this one and if things are good we'll unhook it and uh, run up and get the Cool plow. Alright, the conditions aren't too bad. Um, I'm just getting started here. Um, not having any issues. So, we'll make a couple of passes with this one just to give you an idea how this plow plows. This plow is, oh god, it's got to be. Uh, all of 20 years old, um, we had two of these seven bottom on land uh, Wilrich plows. They plow good until the uh, main part of the frame that the halves hook to that hold the, uh, the, the bottom itself. When they get war, the bottom walks back a little bit and they, the bottoms don't want to stay in the ground. but. This is actually doing a decent job. Um, you know, it, the, the ground is actually drier um, than what I thought it would be. You know, we're getting a little bit of moisture 
um, on top from what the manure is actually holding that's the trouble with uh, spreading like box stall type material um, the bottom just tripped on a stone there um, it, it makes the ground it keeps the ground wetter uh, longer so Everything or not here. Yeah. Lift that. There we go. Apparently, I can't run the control, steer the tractor, and uh, hold the camera here all at the same time. So we'll get her down in the ground. I need uh, I need Sarah to ride with me to run the. Um, on the controls here, so we gotta pull up over this little bit of a a knoll here. We did inject uh, manure down here as well. You can kind of see the little slits in the ground there. This, they made some passes here uh, last week with this tractor when they came down here to uh, hook on to this plow. These plows can be kind of frugal, but they're really not all that bad. Um, for what they are, they do a pretty good job. Almost to the end of the field so I'm gonna shut you guys off um, I'm gonna make another pass here and then I'm gonna unhook this plow go up and hook on to the, the cool plow so I'm all unhooked from the Wilrich plow now I've decided not to hook on to uh, the coon plow I made one more pass and it was a little it was a little on the borderline uh, down there um, it's five o'clock now. I'm gonna hook on to the corn planter and I've got a couple of guys that are gonna help me get the corn planter filled up. And I'm just gonna take a couple hours tonight to go through it, get it all completely set, and then I don't know when it's gonna be. It's probably gonna be a week before we can get um, into the field and I'll have a couple of the steps out of the way um, so we can get started maybe a little quicker on our actual first day uh, so we'll get hooked out of the corn planter and we're gonna put um, gonna put some seed in it and get on with it here so I'll probably unhook from the corn planter when I get done tonight and um, hook on to the coon plow and plow tomorrow and it's supposed to rain tomorrow night here that this hitch accepts a larger pin so we're gonna have to get some bushings for that I don't know what the hell they call that that's probably a cat five um, 
hitch and the only other thing I can do is swap out that hitch. I could swap out this hitch for one of the hitches that we have I suppose. I just don't know what size the, the pinhole is on the two point arm itself. So I'm going to have to search that out a little bit but I can at least tell that that um, gap there is too much. Um, it, it will probably never bother but um, we're going to have to get a bushing to go on this um, pin. So we'll go ahead and get the hoses and everything hooked up and then I've got a couple of men up there that are going to help me fill this corn planter. Alright, this is going to be our first fill up. Corn planter is all open. We're going to grab that pallet of seed right there. got the corn planters all full now just make sure you knock the back down now has got that you get it that's clipped down so we have three bags of uh, 1449 Pioneer P1449 AMX it's a uh, BMR blend uh, or a BMR variety uh, silage I've just got to go through and and mix up the uh, graphite and kelp um, we're running precision um, meters now and uh, they want us to use graphite mixed with talc all we've used in the past is um, just regular uh, talc well this has got the the graphite right in it so we went ahead and mixed all this in already I've just got to finish up these last few hoppers so these guys can get them shut up and uh, we'll get on with the rest of the setup on this corn planter since it's got a um, different tractor on it this year, I have to do all the goofy measurements that everybody's seen on YouTube already this year um, to get the, the receiver matched with the, dis the right distances from where the seed goes in the ground from it. So we've had all them measurements in the uh, receiver with our from our other tractor, but we've got a 8310R on there, so I'm going to have to do all the, the goofy measurements that everybody has done already on YouTube. Um, but we'll go and we'll get that set up, and then I've got to pump up the air system, get all these airbags uh, pumped up, and uh, then I'll run the planter in the driveway back and forth just to make sure um, I've got proper spacing. And then I don't know, it's probably going to be week 10 days, isn't it, before we get planting? But at least I've got this job done. These gentlemen helped me fill the planter. Um, last year I had James help me fill it on the first day. Yeah. yeah. My first day. You did? Yeah. Oh, I'm the shop, remember? We vacuumed it out. No, we must have changed varieties or something. That was the Great Plains planter. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, get on with the rest of the setup here. Our planter is all full of seed. We're going to take that down in front of the shop, do the measurements that we need to do on that. Then we're going to bring it up. We're going to back it in the hay barn here. But first, we have to get the chopper going. We've got to pull this out, put this in the shop. We've got to do some things to that. And uh, then we can back the corn planter in here, park the corn planter so that it's in out of the rain that we're going to get here in the next couple days so this thing has not been running in about a month so we're going to turn the battery switch on there and just like everything else on youtube nothing wants to start when it's supposed to but i'm pretty confident that this on the other hand 
is going to start. So, listen, you ready? There we go. She's alive. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, take this down to the shop and uh, get it in. We just got to run through a few things on it. It's, it's all ready to go. Um, but I just got to, I want to dot my I's and cross my T's on everything. Um, the inoculant thing that was taken off. Uh, the other day, the Pioneer salesman, he's going all through that, make sure that thing's going to work. But um, we just need to uh, check a few things on it. And uh, the dealer had done a bunch of work to it. The knife should be all sharp. All that stuff is, is good to go. So I'm going to put this in the shop so we can put the corn planter in this hay barn where this uh, chopper's sitting. Get it out of the weather. Okay, I don't want to bore everybody to death um, with getting out the tape measure and doing every little you know measurement here but um, it's important to put these measurements into the display the display is set into my right hand side here um, up on the rail and um, this display is going to uh, input all the information as far as you know what we're planting where we're planting and um, it's going to run the corn planter too. The corn planter that we're running uh, has what's called section control on it. In other words, it's only going to plant the seeds where the seeds have not been planted already. And the reason why we're having to do all these measurements is because it gets all the information from the, the measurement information so that it knows where the corn planter is in, re in correspondence to where the tractor is, is is it gets all that information from the receiver that is up on the um, top of the cab of this tractor. Now there's various measurements that you need. You need the measurement from the receiver to various points and one of the points is to the hitch of the tractor and then from the hitch of the tractor to the control point on the planter, which some planters are driven with um, the wheels, so you need that measurement. You need the measurement where the seed is being dropped in the ground, and there's a couple of other measurements. There's the measurement from the, from the receiver to the ground, and it needs to know if the receiver is in the center of the implement and the reason why that information is all important is because when you're starting to corner uh, the the tractor being that it's a um, it's hooked to the corn planter it needs to know where that pivot point in the hitch is because as you start to compensate and go around the corner that receiver is all of a sudden going to be closer to uh, the connection point or and or the the spot on the planter where the seed is coming out so as it's cornering it needs to maintain that same uh, distance between the row that you've already planted the, the previous pass that you've already planted and the pass that you're making with the corn planter during the, the current pass and then it, as, it, as it's making that pass, it needs to record that information so that in the next pass, it can run parallel or run along the same line as that uh, previous pass. So that's why all that information has to be put into um, this display. Um, some of it is in inches, some of it is in feet. And you can use the... Uh, manufacturer's settings in other words you can use the measurements of the machine that you're pulling and all that data is already inputted uh, from Deere with the serial number that matches your machine however you can run into a problem where maybe that information wasn't quite put in right and an inch or two 
is not too awful critical, but if you were off by a foot, your start and stops might be different. Um, in other words, when you get into the um, end of your row, the planter might stay on longer than needed, and then when you start again, the planter is going to start slower than needed. So you're going to have um, long stops and short or, or long, well it's going to be long starts too. And the end of your field is going to be, it, it's going to be staggered um, to where the corn planter stopped and started. So that's why all these measurements are, you know, again I've said that, why, that's why they're important. You can also use the uh, VIN number from the tractor too, and that's going to input the information with as far as the receiver is off the ground and from the receiver to the connecting point, whether you're pulling from the drawbar or if you're pulling from the three-point hitch. But again, that information can be slightly wrong. You don't really want to trust that. You want to measure all that stuff out, and then you can store this information um, in your display according to the machine you're using and then when you go into the following year you can already have that information already pre-populate for you but however you want to write all this information down and have it somewhere so that you can just use it quick and uh, just check all that information as you're going through your setup pages and then another thing you want to do is um, like what we're going to do here tonight once I get all this information in there um, but no I'm not going to do it tonight all I'm going to do tonight is just make sure I got seed coming out of the planter but when I actually go to plant with this planter I will dig up seed where I think it should have stopped and where I think it should have started to make sure I'm getting a, a start and stop exactly where I need it. Another thing I do too, and I can show you, I don't know if I'll show you tonight or not, but on the um, the meter drives, I can see, I don't know if it's row 15 or 14. I can't remember which, but it's either row 15 or 14. There's a little round um, drive plastic piece and I usually put a white line on it that I can watch that um, drive and then when the planter goes down I can kind of see right where the planter engages so that I can tell where the seed is dropped and then again I can watch that too when the uh, um, seed is stopped coming out to know when that planter is stopped. So I'm just gonna slam these uh, measurements into this display now um, what I failed to mention is I have a different tractor on this planter this year so that's why I have to do all these measurement measurements again I, I'm running an 8310R that happens to belong to the dealership our 7290 uh, that we regularly plant with is um, getting some transmission work done to it so I have to start all over again this year and do all these measurements again but um, it's it's simple work and I'm just gonna I'm gonna run through it so uh, we'll get this done we're gonna take the corn planter up unhook it and I think I might plow tomorrow I either have to find um, bushings for these pins on this corn planter to fit this hitch I don't know if this is called a category 4 or if it's a category 5 um, hitch but my pin that's on the corn planter is too small and it's gonna fall out of the um, hooks that are on the three-point hitch. The other option I have is to pull this quick hitch off and put one of our own quick hitches on. So we're going to explore that option here in the morning, but the main thing is let's get these measurements in, get the corn planter unhooked, and call it a night. So here we go. All right, we've got all our uh, measurements done and all that stuff's in there. I've just turned the uh, fertilizer on. Um, for the 2x2 two two, which is going to drop in up front and I turn the tank on in the back which that is the um, inferral uh, fertilizer that we're going to drop on the seed um, through the back tubes there so um, we're just going to do a little dry run 
here in the driveway and make sure we've got each individual row unit working. Um, I've got the, the air system has got the airbags. Well, it did have them pumped up, but they've relaxed some. So I might have a little bit of a leak somewhere. So I got to fire that up again. I only had about 30 pounds of pressure on the airbags. Um, so I got to start that up again here. But um, I am going to unhook this off the corn player because I've got to do something different with a hitch. But I'm also going to take that damn drawbar out. That's why I do not like to have that drawbar in there because you never know uh, when you're going to have a hose or something get caught where you don't need it. Then you lift the damn hitch up and it chinks all your freaking hoses. So I don't usually run um, the drawbar. Uh, on the tractor and that's got the heavy duty draw bar too. It's got the uh, support that comes in underneath it so it's going to take a little bit to get that uh, guy off in there. So we're going to get that apart uh, in the morning after we um, fire this. So we will dry fire it here in the driveway. All right, we're running in this field down back behind the bar. We're just kind of driving around and making sure the um, fertilizer is running at the right pressure and it's running perfect. Uh, last year I was running, I don't know, stupid, stupid, stupid pressure. So um, we're just running along here and I've gone about far enough, so I'm just going to raise her up. And um, I think we're good. Um, we've got fertilizer running out of all the rows. Pressure's running where it should be. And I should be good. So we'll go ahead and fold this planter up. Head back up to the shop. Get it inside. Get it unhooked so we can swap this hitch out. So that being said, that's going to do it for, probably going to do it for this video. Setting the planter down now, I've got everything unhooked from it. Just set that on the ground. And go forward, not backwards. Alright, we're all unhooked from it. And there we go. So we've got the corn planter in the, the hay barn and uh I've got to do something about this hitch. So, with that being said, um, that's going to do it for this video, folks. So, we'll catch you at the next one. We'll probably get some plowing in tomorrow. Um, it's not going to rain until tomorrow night. Um, uh, if it doesn't rain tomorrow night, Friday is going to be the day to start planting corn. But I'm afraid that's not going to happen if we get the amount of rain that they're talking about. So. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll catch you at the next one. Remember to hit the thumbs up. Drop me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't yet already. Thanks again, folks.